Wow, Charles, I don't, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> Whiskey Tango Charlie, welcome to another episode. I like, I don't even know where to go with this as we venture outside of the state of Kentucky, and we try to find some of those unique bourbons across the United States. You know, yeah. So let's play geography. Geography for 100. For 100. I like that. Jeopardy. Right. We are. Like yeah, geography for 100. Um, Jackson, Mississippi. The, the state capital. You are correct. Oh, oh so what is the state capital? Right. No, see, <laughs> no. see, yeah, what is? Yeah. yeah, what is the state yeah. capital? Uh, but yes, Cathead Distillery. That's the home of Cathead Distillery, right? Yeah. So as an artist, I understand Cathead. Right, and if you named your distillery Cathead Distillery, uh, kudos to you. Yeah, no, right, paying homage to uh, you know it's kind of like it's, it's a big deal for, for folks. Um, but you know this this was um, you know this is old soul, this is old soul. This is the bourbon from from Cathead Distillery, and and uh, what's unique about Cathead? You know, no, I'll tell you, it is the oldest legal distillery from the state of Mississippi. So it's funny you say that, Charles, because we continue to talk about this is the oldest distillery in this state, this is the oldest distillery, and you go and look and you find out it's like 2010, 2017, and you're going like, what the hell? Yeah, and, right? and, and, and the you know, little history fact here, you know, we talk about, right, we, we kind of go into the uh, prohibition, the repeal of that, Here's what many people may not know. Who was the last state to repeal it? Because it didn't go nationwide, right? And North Carolina was, was close to the end. Yeah, so I'm going to have to say Mississippi because that's what we're talking that, about. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right? <laughs> Do I go to the final right? Hey, 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 there we go. No, so, but let's, let's disclaim that, right? So the reason they were the last state to go is because they had so many illegal distilleries, they didn't need to worry about it, right? I, I, you could be, you could be correct on right. that. Right. So. Because when I see some of these oldest distilleries in the state, and they're, you know, in the two thousands, I'm going to say, you know what? Kudos to all those moonshiners that got us to where we are today. Yeah. So, this is um, this is uh, liquor by the lake. This was a this is a pick from. Uh, liquor by the lake, which is close close to home for me, I and mean, it's right down the road uh, for me. Um, this one I knew about, uh, was able to go down by there, pick this up, and uh, and my friend Anthony, I'm gonna do a little shout out for Anthony over there at the Bourbon Whiskey Library. Uh, he was part of the team that uh, that helped pick this thing, and uh, this one, uh, just to say, uh, this I've been into it already at at home, and uh, sample it and. Just a wonderful nose right off the bat, right. and this one is not their standard, right? This because this is a this was a barrel or a select private select, right? Right. So this is a very unique bottle because we don't see this all the time. So talk about truth in labeling. This is probably Charles the most truth I've ever seen. So they actually talk about the mash build. It is a single barrel, 109 proof, 75 percent corn. 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. Right. And that's not what makes this label on the back of this bottle unique, because you never see this, right? We see these stickers quite often uh, as all these clubs you know, do these barrel picks, but listen to this. This old soul was selected from a private client program, right? Right, right. Right? We keep a watchful eye on single barrel profiles and show unique, distinct characteristics. These rare barrels are shared only with clients. Right. Right? So they go into detail and talk about this bottle that you've picked up off the shelf is just not an old soul. It is actually, based on the description on the back of it, they talk about a barrel select where you don't see that on other barrels. Right, right. And, and I just say right off the bat, 
kudos to this. And, and listen, I, I'm, I'm, I know Anthony. I know I've seen some of their posts out there. Uh, the crew that goes out, um, these guys are, are good, solid. They've got good palates, and they, they do. And this one, um, at 109 proof. It does not drink like 109? <laughs> it is so smooth, so silky smooth. And as much as it's unfair for us to talk about a barrel pick on our show, because obviously it's going to be hard for you to find this, as a single barrel, there's probably only about, you know, at 109, there's probably about 250 bottles of this available. Yeah. Once it's gone off the shelf, these descriptors that we're going to talk about today in this show uh, are gone. They're out the window. Uh, this is a very unique bottle, mm. and uh, uh, we apologize that we're not really describing to you the essence of Old Soul. Right. But we're going to talk about this barrel pick. This is a barrel pick. Here's what I would I would venture to say that I would venture to say this would be across the board in any of their products. Uh, some of their flavor profiles and some of the uniqueness, uh, smoothness, and those kind of things. I think you're going to run across that <laughs> across the board here. This one um, just got a, a sweetness on the on the nose. Yeah. And then it, it's kind of interesting. I was looking for. Um, I, I was thinking at 109, I was going to get a little more on the palate. It is so smooth. And then it, it, the flavor profiles is kind of setting back half of the palate for me. And um, I thought it would be, it's, it's a balance between sweetness and peppery. And it kind of keeps, it keeps teeter-tottering. I mm -hmm. get a sip and I get, I get sweetness, but then I get that little peppery finish on it. And it really, really, really nice. So this is a typical rye for me. I'm a rye guy, so obviously I'm tasting different things. The sweetness I believe that I'm getting from this is the 75% corn. I do pick up a lot of the rye, but I'm picking up a lot of the woods in this. This is a woodsy, but not an oak in the woods that I'm picking up in my scent. But obviously on my palate, it's creeping towards the front. I'm a rye guy. I enjoy a little bit spicier. It truly coats my tongue. And as I look at the legs on this thing, you can really tell that it, the sweetness of this juice um, comes out in the legs. It's, it's the really oil. funny you said that, because when you, when you said woodsy, woodsy, and I, my eyes went down to the board because I went to the wood mm -hmm. area, and I went across and s toasted smoke, green, pine, oak, and, and then I, I saw cedar, and I'm like, that's it, because I was like, what is it? What is it? And it has that hint of cedar finish to it. That's it. This is actually the first bourbon that I've ever experienced in my entire career that I can actually feel it coming up back through my nostrils, through the back side of my throat, into my nose, and that is that cedar charm. It's a cedar finish. Yep. That's really, that's really pleasant. Um, so, hey. You got the state capital right. You I'm got going the, to the finals. <laughs> you, you got the um, the prohibition question correct. No one. I think, no. I think I added to that one, but um, and it's a rise. So I won all the way across the board today. <laughs> there you go. So um, hey, folks, um, if you see this one and wherever it is, barrel pick or not, I think it's worth probably a. a a venture to grab a bottle and try it. Um, and um, who knows? Uh, kudos to Cathead. To Cathead Distillery for, uh, for pushing out a great, great deal here. Yeah. And as we say, Cathead, which is a descriptor of a very respectful um, artist, great job. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. I love it. Yes.